Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. And uh, today we have another special guest all away from the state of Georgia, Dr. Sarah Bolden. Uh, and Dr. Bolden, I've asked her to tell us about her practice and what she does. But more important of all, I want her to tell, uh, tell everybody how how Kay and I and them have got connected, our connection with them. Uh, Sarah, welcome. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, such a pleasure and it's so great to see you. Um, so as you just mentioned, I have a private practice in Woodstock, Georgia, and we have a very unique practice here because we are treating men and women who have uh, pelvic pain, pelvic floor dysfunction, um, and so it's a very special practice that is designated for, you know, from the waist down, if you will. Um, and so um, it is a much needed area. A lot of people who are experiencing either pain or dysfunction in this area don't really have a lot of options to go to. And so we'll do conservative uh, treatment and management for chronic conditions uh, of the bladder or the bowel, um, or we can um, do different different techniques like functional medicine to help people who want to choose like a natural or a homeopathic way of doing things instead of maybe a pharmaceutical or surgical way of doing things. So, and we do a lot of partnerships with other uh, practices in the area, GYNs or urologists or urogynecologists uh, who might say, hey, this patient is not appropriate for surgery, or maybe we just need them to be prepped for surgery. They'll come and see us and we will do, again, conservative techniques and treatments and maybe functional medicine type of things to help um, people who have pain with intercourse or pelvic pain or in interstitial cystitis or IBS, something like that. And because it's so specialized, you uh, you also have, uh, uh, it's there's not a lot of folks out there doing it. Is that correct? This is correct. I mean, probably in the state of Georgia, we have less than 50 people in the entire state that, did, yeah. that do what we do. Yeah. So, so it's very possible that people have to drive quite a ways to see a specialist in even different parts of the country. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So... And it's great because during this pandemic, which I was uh, telling you earlier, is um, we are considered an essential worker. So we were still open during the time um, when the pandemic first hit. Um, and people would come and it didn't matter their age. Um, you know, a lot of times people were like, well, if they were over the age of 65, they were afraid to leave their house or something. That, that wasn't really the case with us because people just needed that contact. They needed to be um, seen. They wanted to be um, in, 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 the, in the company of another human being. They, they needed to be touched, you know, and those are the kind of things that um, I think we'll get more into uh, later on in the conversation. But, but yeah, so we, we have been open this whole time and careful, we've been careful and, and used wisdom about, you know, our hand washing and wearing masks and just making sure that we were um, being careful, but people were like, I just want to come in and I want to be seen, so. Well, being in the medical profession and nurse myself, that's not how we got connected. We got connected a different way. Sarah, tell us how we, how we got connected. We got connected through church and uh, you and Kay were part of our connect group. And we had the best connect group ever. We did more laughing than I think we probably should have. Um, <laughs> it was such a great connection. And you got to meet, um, and, and we got a chance to meet up on a weekly basis. And we got a chance to meet and have our families really, really um, uh, get to know each other and uh, really be able to bond with each other. and. And I just remember lots of laughter, lots of just wonderful moments of just being with the Lord and really just diving deep with some intense moments in our in our lives. And it was just such a beautiful time. And uh, it's just great. It was so wonderful to have you guys. 
your boys now are six foot tall and they're huge guys. Uh, when they, when we were in the connection or connection group with you, they were real small. And I was just sharing with, uh, with the Sarah, the story of we had s'mores one night, we went outside and made s'mores and my wife and I, the grandparents in us started kicking and we kept giving the boys chocolate and they were just, and their face was covered with chocolate. I'll never forget that look. Uh, yeah, like, hey, how many of those have you had, my son? And he's like, only one. And he's like all over his face and his shirt. Sugar them up and send them home. That's what yeah. I say, right? Yeah, just like a grandparent, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> so good. In this time, connection is so important. Connection professionally, like you're doing with your practice, and also connecting with people socially spiritually and through also the community of church and uh uh that that connection lasts the years doesn't it it sure does and and you know one thing it, it has to be intentional um i really feel like it's easy for any of us to say oh i i used to do xyz and i and i just stopped doing that um maybe it's maybe people have stopped going to church. Maybe they felt like, you know, nervous or fearful, um, but we're created for connection. We're created. What I'm finding now, it has to be intentional. The, you have to make the effort um, because it's really easy. As you know, the suicide rate has gone up, what, 400% is something, uh, astronomical like that. And I think it's because we're, we stopped becoming intentional about being in community and being with each other and checking on each other and like, hey, how are you doing? Maybe someone is immunocompromised and they can't be in the community. We've kind of forgotten about some of those people, but if we can be intentional about that and really making an effort to say, how are you? How are you doing? I know you're not comfortable with going out. Are you able, or can I leave food for you? Can I come and visit you through your window? Or can I come and just be with you? I, I think that's what we all need to do is just be intentional about that. Boy, I love that. The intentional purpose of just reaching out to others, because I, I believe that this is getting to be a culture, if we're not careful, of drawing in and staying drawn in. And, uh, and like you said, God intended us to have relationships with not only him, but with others, hasn't he? Right, right. And things that you have in, inside of you could benefit something that I'm going through and vice versa. And if I don't go to you and I don't connect with you and I don't keep in touch with you after, you know, 10 years of knowing We're in a little bit of a, a Zoom freeze there. There we go. Yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. So I was just saying that we have something that I think God puts inside of us that we can be um, a benefit to someone else. Good. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why God says, hey, let's be, let you are made for a relationship because I put something in you that someone else might need. All right. Good. And. Um, I often say on this show and with interviews a lot, God knows uh, our heart. It's uh, up to us to hear his voice. And so many times God speaks to us to say, to reach out to folks that we're not listening. And so I think we ought to look at our list of people that we look at and like Sarah and I've been connected now and, uh, and we're just getting caught up on our families. I think it's important to reach out to the people you currently are seeing and folks that you've also had in the past as well. Yes, agreed, for yeah. sure. All right. Sarah, it is so nice to see you today and it's be connect with you. Uh, send your love to your beautiful family. Give them, give those boys, a, I know they're big boys now, but give them a big chocolate bar and see if they can <laughs> smear it all over their face again. And uh, uh, what I'd like to do, is I, I'm going to put Sarah's information down below. She's in, in the information she's going to, uh, in, in her site, She's going to talk about her practice. And so if you've got questions about her, even though if you don't, if you don't live in Georgia, please contact her and ask her 
so she she's got contacts in the industry that she could help you out and, and as well as uh, her her books that she has to offer it's going to be down below and and, and, and available uh down below in, in the comment section uh i would like to thank you for for joining us today and is there any closing thoughts that you have for us today I just want to maybe encourage people in the Lord to really just understand that in the middle of a very dark season that we as a society and even as a world, we're kind of in this really dark season to know that there is hope um, that God can still use you, that God can still minister through you, um, that, that um, we don't have to allow fear to dictate how God uses us. And we can step out and know that God, if it's his calling and his will, that there is a protection and we can be rest, we can rest in that protection because he know, because we're doing his will. And I would just say just to, that's probably the biggest thing, just not letting fear dictate what. Absolutely. Yes. Um, here's what I'd like to do. We're going to close the show, but I, I'd like for you to listen to this show, those that's listening to it and say, ask yourself, is there somebody that needs to hear this message? And if they do, pass it on either through YouTube or through the Facebook uh, Morning Moments show, pass it on to them or share it on your site so that others can hear this beautiful and timely message that we heard this morning. Uh, thank you all for joining us for Morning Moments and keep coming back and may God richly bless you all.